congratulations to, uh, to Spain. Congratulations to Jorge Vilda, the uh, head coach, and to uh, all the players. Está regresando a casa. Uh, it has come home now to Spain. And uh, everything in is, it is in order. We have avoided the catastrophe and the disaster um, and the nightmare that would have been uh, England winning. And I know I... I Gave them a lot, of, uh, a lot of crap and stuff like that. But the reality is that uh, I think this was the best two teams and uh, in this final. But after 90 minutes, there was no doubt in my mind, and I don't think there should be any doubt as to who was the best team in this final. I thought Spain was the best team, for, was the better team from start to finish. Yes, England hit the crossball at one point, but this was uh, women against girls, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, in the way that they played in the identity that they had and the quality that they showed. I agree. Spain, the better team from start to finish. Uh, England just didn't have a lot going forward that could trouble Spain. As you mentioned, Lauren Hemp hit the crossbar early on, but after that, even when they brought on Lauren James, um, Chloe Kelly, it was interesting that those players came in for Russo and Daly, so she took out a lot of their goal-scoring right. uh, ability. Um, so, yeah, England just never looked like scoring to me. I thought this was a good first half, but the game really petered out in the second half. Um, but, yeah, overall, Spain deserved winners. Uh, from the moment they arrived here, they looked to me to be the best team. Uh, I feel now like my orgasms were warranted. They absolute, absolutely warranted orgasms on your part. Yeah. And uh, that, that if in any way, shape, or form I poo-pooed your orgasms earlier in the uh, World Cup, I apologize. I should have recognized them, that they were genuine, authentic, and were to be celebrated, uh, these orgasms. And maybe mine's, you know, uh, a delayed orgasm, in that after this game, I was really even more impressed than I had been through the tournament. I think this game in particular, the way that they played, and there were some, there were some moments where Spain came out of the back with one and two touch passing that was really ph phenomenal. And I said on air uh, you know, after the game that you know, the, the romantics that play the game like this oftentimes aren't necessarily rewarded uh, in, in the form of winning, in the form of trophies. Because this is, this is not easy to do, what Spain is doing. And that they have progressed so far and, and evolved so far over this fa past four years is a credit to the talent that they have, but also the identity that has been instilled in this team. And I, I, giving them the courage to play like that at each and every moment, I, it's just, it's something to see. It is interesting that with all the attacking talent on hand, it's Olga Carmona who ends up scoring the two biggest goals of this World Cup for them, the game winner against... Sweden in the semis, and then the only goal today in the final. So an unlikely hero emerged at the end. Yeah, but they, I mean, they spread the wealth. Sure. And one of the yeah. things that we said four years ago during the previous World Cup that, you know, they weren't quite ready for primetime, and that, that ruthlessness and the ability to do ultimately what all of this possession has to lead to, which is put the ball in the net, they did it. They didn't do it necessarily by finding just a consistent goal score, and they, they did it by committee. And maybe in that, and is it me, Mossy, but... You know the heyday of, uh, of Spain from the men's side, right? There were people that were, like you, orgasmic about watching this Spanish team play from a men's perspective. And it resulted in a World Cup, and, and that, that was wonderful, and a, and a wonderful multiple cycles there. I find that the way that this Spanish women's team plays is more interesting, more entertaining, and I think is the ideal version of what many who at times watched the men's version of it in Spain and said, yeah, but, it, but sometimes it's, it's masturbatory, right? It's, 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 they're not really doing something. And this team, while they have the possession and they have the adherence to keeping the ball and frustrating the opponent, it's not, it's not without a purpose. And, and so I just... I, I, is that crazy for me to say? No, no, I get it. Um, and I do think the player that gives this team a different element is Pat Arweo. And it was a very interesting yep. call by Jorge Vilda to start her today. She'd been such a good super sub the last couple of matches. Uh, now, she needs to improve her finishing because she does miss some chances that she shouldn't. But, uh, I mean, she is a live wire. She just gives that team a directness and explosiveness that I think does bring a different element to the and team. And while she, you know, she did miss a couple of uh, chances, and she's still, still only 19, but by the way, her... her her trophy case is already <laughs> stacking up in terms of what she's doing. And I think that will, that will come with time. But she did spread and gave you the, bit of, uh, the ability with that speed to really do some, uh, some different things that maybe in the past uh, the Spanish national team from a men's perspective didn't have.